the, the first 30 minutes of this show was like one of the America's Got Talent audition shows where they're not even in front of people yet and the acts that don't make it, that get cut, that don't hit the flip or don't do the trick right or whatever. It's They're not even being serious about trying to get on the live shows and pass the audition show because they think these people will eat up anything, and apparently they will. The opening 10-man tag. They do a, a, an open video for the Adam Page team, a cowboy video with apparently Wilford Brimley was doing the voiceover. They went to Lynx to do the. It wasn't Wilford Brimley, but he had the same old country accent. It was a voiceover guy. And they, they did a video all about how Page is a cowboy, and so was the Dork Order. The Dork Order were put in the position there on the cowboy team. And they did the elaborate stage entrance with Adam Page in between seven other gimmick guys with matching bandanas, but it's the, it was the best they've ever looked. Didn't you think the Dork Order? They cut they they had some color to them. They were all wearing kind of the same thing. They still had sharpie marks on their chest, wearing stupid fucking masks, but they looked kind of halfway like something. They tried to dress them up, but then here comes the elite. And now they get a basketball team introduction. Did you notice the Hardly boys were both uh, announced as at six foot six? I it's mean, it was it was a six. spoof of it's a spoof Space of everything. Jam, yeah. Oh, I, I was I've watching. Never, I've never seen that movie, so I didn't. I just thought it was a spoof of basketball. I was Why, watching you know. to see if Omega could dribble, though. Well, he, <laughs> of course, he can dribble. He does. He does that often, depending on how much he's got in his mouth. But the thing is, everybody comes out with a basketball. There's Don Fallis wearing shorts and black knee-high socks and dress shoes. They're, they're not even in the ring yet, and it's a clown show. They go into a dribbling exhibition. Then they've got an actual portable basketball goal, not regulation height, and they're shooting baskets. This is the fucking heel team coming to the ring like a bunch of fucking clowns. Nobody can ever bury the WWE for being a clown show and defend the first five minutes alone of this fucking stinker. It's just different clowns doing different fucking clown routines and not, and actually not even taking the clown routine seriously. This is like a bunch of magicians laughing because they blow the fucking trick and drop the rabbit. So then it was a 10-man elimination tag team match between the jobbers and the comedians. And within 10, 15 seconds tops, they went into a 10-way, right in the middle of the ring. Quadruple suplexes, where four guys gave four more guys a vertical suplex. They all went to the floor for a, a short stage fight where they could do their quail spot, or their coil spot, which uh, they're either quails or coils, where... The other two guys that didn't all get suplexed, they get up on the on the turnbuckles, and one guy superplexes another guy off the turnbuckle onto the pile that was waiting to catch him. And they replayed it twice with better camera angles where you could see the guys waiting to catch these guys with their hands out, like they were in the fucking outfield of, of Comiskey Park waiting for the fucking fly ball. They reap not only do they do shit that looks bad, but they replay the shit to make it look worse. And this happened over and over again where their replays exposed shit. Because this shit doesn't stand the light of day and you can see through it. Then they did moves to each other as fast as they possibly could. Then the first person that got eliminated. Nobody, not one of the announcers, nobody, nothing on the PA, nobody ever said to who the first guy was that got eliminated. Did you happen to note it or notice or be able to, it was one of the dork order fucks, but I don't know who they fucking are because they all look the same. I, anyway, then for some reason, all the heels just left Carl Anderson as soon as the, and this was within 15 seconds after the babyface got eliminated. 
or all the heels just left Carl Anderson in the ring with all four of the remaining baby faces. And while the heels were standing out on the floor, the baby faces each hit him with something and pinned him while his partners didn't do anything. And then as when the cover was happening, one of them tried to reach in, but it was just said that was the time he needed to go. So we're not going to try to stop anybody. Um, did you notice that the bald dork order character with the beard, but no face paint looks like little Brutus and is, is about the same height also. I did not notice that. No, he looks like little Brutus. Oh, come on. Everybody Google little Brutus and then Google the little short dork order guy with no face paint. You're talking about John silver. Yes. It was nothing. Yes, come on. Right. Little Brutus. Mm hmm. Little Brutus. All right. Except little Brutus was more entertaining. Uh, actually, anyway. Um, every time that the baby faces were trying to do something and their shit might've gotten over that annoying little douchebag, Brandon Cutlet is horning in on the picture with the cold spray distracting from everything. He's constantly there spraying the heels with that stupid cold spray while the baby faces are trying to get over and it's just distracting. It's annoying. They go to a break. This match, by the way, went 30 minutes. I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. Back from the break, the bald dork order with the face paint is beating up Gallows. And meanwhile, and this was right past the break. Just if anybody wants to go back and look at this, Pie Face Buck is sitting on his ass in the baby face's corner in the turnbuckles, and all the baby faces are ignoring him. And they've walked down the ringside apron away from him because he has to sit there until the shit in the ring calls for him to be there, which we find out is the dork order character runs over to that turnbuckle, jumps over his opponent pie face to get to the top rope so that he can jump off onto gallows while pizzeria uno, the, the fat fuck in the S and M mask cannonballs under the dork order guy jumping off the top so that he can hit pie face who laid there and waited for it the whole fucking time. Then they did the spot where fat fuck Uno catches the guy's kick and hands the guy's leg to the referee who holds it accidentally so that Uno can do something. Then I swear to God, and this was, this was tweeted a lot and I retweeted it. Everybody rolled out to the floor again and actually just didn't worry about fighting, just huddled up and bent over and looked up, bracing themselves so the bald-headed face-painted dipshit in the dork order could turn his back on them, jump from the apron to the top rope, and come off backwards with a double-twisting pike and went straight through the middle of all eight of them to the floor, back first, nearly killed himself, and then all eight guys that he didn't touch fell down individually. And they replayed that twice. And you could see a better shot of all the people, friend and foe alike, falling down that hadn't been touched, because this is fucking garbage. <laughs> and... <laughs> And this fucking guy took the a, a backdrop off the top rope straight to the floor is basically what he did and then just got back up because he was just embarrassed because he just fucked up in front of everybody. I don't know why he was embarrassed. Nobody even notices. It's just constant. And then they continued the match. And then this was, I'm not lying about this one, Gallows and the bald dork order fellow fought into the arena where the, it was the little Brutus, I think it was. Was it little Brutus there? No, it wasn't. It was the other one, the one with the face paint. Uno's partner. Um, Braveheart. He dove off the side of the bleachers on Gallows with a double hammer fist. Guess what happened to him, Brian? They'd been out there in the in the arena probably about 30 seconds. Guess what happened to him? You know, so you don't have to guess, yeah. but just... They got counted out and the crowd booed because every it's, this is that now people are going to say, oh, Cornette's always fucking hot. 
When they don't get counted out, well, now they're doing something about it. They got counted out. Yes, after two years, people can just leave the ring, fight as long as they want, go out in the crowd, go out in the bleachers, go out in the goddamn parking lot. Nothing. They've never had a count out. These people are out there less than fucking 30 seconds. They just went there specifically so they could get counted out, and they both got counted out at the same time. And then the people booed. But a count out? You're, you're enforcing rules? That's what you get when you just decide to start enforcing the rules two years into a fucking project. You get people booing them, and it looks stupid because now you've already set up expectations. Okay. Suddenly, now there's like four guys out, so there's still six guys, but all of a sudden, Twinkle Toes and Uno are the only guys in the match. There's nobody else in the ring. There's nobody else on the apron. There's nobody else in sight of the camera. So that they, Twinkle Toes and Fatso Uno, the cousin of Ratso Rizzo, can do lucha spots, two fucking white, not white guys, two translucent guys doing lucha spots by themselves with nobody else in the match. They're just gone. And then Twinkle Toes hits the one-winged fairy on this fucking baked potato in a bodysuit and pins him one, two, three. And then a little Brutus starts beating up Pie Face, and we go to the break again. We come back from the break. Little Brutus is in the middle of kicking the shit out of all the fucking heels who have apparently in the break so that they have to tell us about it and replay it. A major happening in the match happens during the break. They powerbombed Adam Page on the apron. The heels did, and Page is out of action. So now... It's up to little Brutus, but he's killing everybody until, wait a minute, Twinkle Toes hits the, the V trigger. I finally found out where he got that from. Brian, he got, it's the vagina trigger. Oh, come on. And he got it from the vagina monologues. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Somebody said he got it from a video game. That's ludicrous. He got it from the vagina monologue. So he hits the vagina trigger. On little Brutus, who doesn't take a bump on this big hot finish. He just turns around and Balding Buck super kicks him. He doesn't take a bump on that. He just turns the other way. So the Twinkle Toes tries to get the Snapdragon suplex, you know, the tulip suplex he does on him with the full Nelson, but Brutus's arm kept blocking Twinkle Toes and he couldn't get it. So he just Germaned him. And that's when little Brutus actually took a bump after he'd been. Vagina triggered and super kicked and snapdragoned or German or whatever. So then he rolls out of the goddamn ring. The baby face does and twinkle toes grabs a basketball and gets on the apron and balding buck is in the ring and pie face buck gets the poor baby face in an upside down tombstone pile driver position on the floor and balding buck springs to the top rope, grabs the ball that twinkle toes has flipped him, goes to do the dunk, misses the dunk and then falls on his ass in front of the guy who got tombstone pile driver. I guess that's called the dementia driver in honor of their favorite uncle. This looked ridiculous. He missed the dunk. He missed the assist on the move. The guy got dropped on his head anyway. They obviously don't give a fuck about this fucking cartoon match they're having. And the poor guy that had to be held in this position, what if goofball balding buck with his receding hairline had been more concerned about making the dunk, which he missed, than he was about fucking not landing on the guy? He could have landed on the guy's ass and drove him right straight down head first which is probably why it looked so shit because he was trying to take care of the guy and not hurt him, which would have been a reason to not do this whole fucking move. They're just falling around and jacking off in front of people who are screaming and yelling for them. And I can only think that they're going to have a goddamn plummet into reality when people start stop screaming for this shit because they've seen it all and it's old and the joke isn't funny anymore, which jokes usually wear out. 
And all of a sudden, when people start seeing through their shit and they're not screaming at everything they do, I think most everybody on in the elite will have a nervous breakdown because it will be a shocking case of reality for them. So anyway, continue, whether is this is embarrassing or insulting to the business or a parody of the business or whatever, suddenly... Page is left on his own, so now he's okay and he's ready to go. He goes face-to-face with Twinkle Toes, and they have a fight. And suddenly, all three heels just jump in and glom Adam Page and give him triple super kicks, two count. Then they just jump back in again and triple team him in front of the referee again, get another two count. Then old Harpo Fingerfuck, our favorite wrestling artist, gesticulates and finger points and literally skips to the ropes and flips around and fucking page clotheslines him and then hits the fucking cucamonga kids and then does his moonsault off the top to the floor onto all three of them but at least he hit them so there's something to be said for that we're 30 minutes into this fucking thing then page foils the bucks maneuver and hits the buckshot lariat on all of them, or on both of them, and pinned pie face. I don't, did he pin the other one? I couldn't keep track, because Twinkle Toes gets one of the title belts and goes to hit Page, but the referee takes it away. And of course, it's the useless, feckless corpse referee, Rick Knox, who now looks, in all honesty, like Uncle Fester on a starvation fucking diet just wrinkly and with dead flesh about him. He's leaning out to put the belt out gingerly. So Twinkle Toes gets another title belt behind the referee's back, takes a swing and misses Adam Page. Adam Page hits the fucking dead eye where he drops Twinkle Toes on his fucking head, gets a two count on Adam Page's finish. He's, he actually got one of the bucks on his buckshot, but he hits his dead eye and Twinkle Toes kicks out. The referee turns his back again and Harpo gets a title belt after taking this fucking top baby faces finish. Harpo gets a title belt and this time hits him, but gets a two count. Then Twinkle Toes, and this is where I remember I was talking about at least they they capitalized. He didn't just beat him flat in the earlier match. I was talking about with Adam Cole and Bronson Reed. Twinkle Toes, whether he's just so ignorant he doesn't realize it, or probably they just think it's okay because so many people do it these days, he beat Adam Page flat. He hit him with the title belt after taking the baby faces, one of the baby faces finishes. He fucking immediately turns around and behind the referee's back, supposedly, and the referee's already buried, hits Adam Page with the title belt and gets a two count but then just picks him up and hits the one-winged fairy and gets a three count. He beat Page. How the fuck did they beat Page in this scenario? If he, if Adam Page had beaten Twinkle Toes, that whole building would have come all over themselves. And it wouldn't have mattered anything about their world champion because it wasn't a world title match. It wasn't a single match. How fucking hard should this have been? He beat Adam Page flat because if he'd hit him with the belt and beat him there, then he would have fucked him. But he didn't. Adam Page kicked out. Then Twinkle Toes calmly picks the guy up and hits his wrestling finish. Like what Adam Page did to Twinkle Toes moments before he hit his wrestling finish. Twinkle Toes kicked right on out. Then Twinkle Toes hits his and beats the guy. They are... You can't tell me they're not doing this on purpose to bury some of these fucking guys because nobody's that stupid. What'd you think? Let me start by saying before I say anything I think and a lot of your thoughts match mine, the crowd there loved it. The crowd there was going nuts throughout the Everything. whole fucking thing. And it's a, actually, it, it, that's the one thing that did hurt my heart. Charlotte, North Carolina especially that arena, all the great wrestling that they've seen, all the great talent that they saw for decades and decades. And it's been so long now. And those people have gone away. And now in that. And now all their neighbors that didn't go to those shows, they have kids and those kids are attending AEW. And those kids are going and laughing at the wrestling business. 
and uh, partially on the backs of what we did because everybody at uh, Charlotte wrestling, we got to go. But now they're seeing this and they think it's somehow proper. And it, that hurt my heart. Go ahead. Now there've always been audio issues. Whoever watches on TV versus the app versus whatever else. Some people the, an- the announcers are sometimes Jr. sounds like he's coming from Mars and, right. and Tony sounds good and vice versa. Yeah. And sometimes you can't hear the audience. Now I heard the audience loud and clear during this. And I heard from people that the audience was into the whole show. But to me, the audience got a lot quieter after this match. There are periods during matches where it got again at home. I don't know what is going on in the room. I'm just telling you what I perceive watching TNT on Fios, but it seemed like they did so much here for so long, like 40 plus minutes, that it was hard maybe for the fans to get into everything as much. This probably would have been a better main event if you didn't have that other match going on last, because this can't follow that, obviously. Well, at least if they'd have put this match on last, they wouldn't have lost any sponsors. The story is, and I'm going to assume, and I think it's a reasonable deduction that it's because of Punk or potentially Brian, or it could be Christian. That was teased. But the word going around today, I've seen it on Twitter before, is that AEW is not going with Hangman Page versus Omega at All Out. So looking at this decision, knowing that the next big event is not going to be... When's he going to get another chance if they've got Brian Danielson and CM Punk coming in? Twinkle Toes is going to be busy. This at least gets Page's chance before he's completely floundering in the wilderness. But if they wanted his chance to be him winning the title... His chance should be him getting royally fucked and should have won the title. And then Twinkle Toes never wants to fucking face him again. That's the way you keep the guy fucking hot and keep people interested in him, not never give him the thing until finally, well, fuck it. He's playing with the dork order. He's never going to be the champion. He's never going to need a title match, whatever the fuck. Give him the title match. He should have won. He got fucked. And Twinkle Toes is scared to ever face him again. Oh, well, you're scared to face him? Well, look who we got. And then there's Brian or Punk or whatever. The f- I wasn't crazy about the match. Look, I'm not into the Young Bucks and their style of match and their style of layout of a match and just nonstop spots and the Stu Grayson spot where he just landed and you can watch the slow-mo, you see his head bounce. So stupid, so unnecessary. Like I said, the people that were there were super into it, but me watching at home, it was on for 40 minutes, so you couldn't, like, you know, just not pay attention to it, but it wasn't in my eyes, a classic or anything. It was just they did another bunch of silliness, and then it kept going and do. going. And there was nothing left. There was no move left for anybody else to do by the time this thing was finished. That's why the people were quiet. They were like, well, there's nothing new. 